welcome back to my channel. I have a another video today. Obviously, that's why we're all here. It's not like I've got a cake for you or a pizza or anything like that. It's a video. Surprise! I thought I would do like a different video to my usual fashion ones today because I feel like a proper catch up is well overdue. So I put out a Q&A on Instagram asking for questions that you would like answering and we got some really good ones. Okay, what is your go-to skincare product? Okay, I actually had to go and get them because I wanted to show you them and yes, I know it says go-to, meaning probably like one, <laughs> but I wanted to bring in some other ones because I really can't choose, but I would say that my main thing it's probably skin and me and I you know I have done paid work with them but I've been using them since April now so this is a little it's called like a daily doser and the way it works I don't want to twist it and waste any product but you twist that every single day like well every night I put it on at night this includes all of your active ingredients for your when you sign up to them you send them pictures of your face with no makeup on and you talk about your skin concerns they ask you questions in like a questionnaire format and then they formulate a bespoke treatment for you for daytimes especially oh god i'm knocking everything over um for daytimes especially i like i am a huge elemis fan i love their cleansers but i've run out of them in it but their cleansers are amazing i love their pro collagen marine cream oh my god this feels so good and this is a day cream absolutely love it um it it just makes my skin feel really really hydrated and plump so this is paula's choice so it's two percent bha it's a gel exfoliant this comes in a liquid format as well but it was out of stock so i got the gel one and i actually really love the consistency and then finally this is my favorite at home mask it looks such a mess now i'm also a big kate somerville fan so this goes on for like two minutes it's like an acid base mask oh my god it is so so good i used it last night and obviously i know i'm wearing makeup but like my makeup sits so well on my skin it just gets rid of all like the crap off your face next question what would you wear for a night out okay so i actually saw some really nice pieces with the boohoo and megan fox collection i actually really really like the sparkly like blazer and suit combo which is this i really want to show you that because that is this is like my dream outfit but it's out of stock. I really hope they do a restock because honestly, like that will be my Christmas sort of like party, like whole vibe. Like, I love a sparkly suit. So yeah, that's amazing. But then also they've got this really nice set, which is a little bit more relaxed. So this set is this like black silky plissé top and trousers. You know, I love top and trouser sets anyway, because you can actually like mix and match them with other things, but this is so nice. So it's just really comfy and but also really stylish with a pair of heels, a really nice handbag. I think with your hair like slicked back into a bun and worn open with a bralette or like either just done with one button up and loads of jewelry. Oh, oh my God. And like, a, I think like a, a deep, like, well, not a deep red, but a bright, a really like red, red lipstick. Oh my God, it'll look so good. And then I also really love this top as well, which is also part of the collection, which is great because you can wear it obviously with the trousers too you can wear it with jeans if i was going for more of a casual like i'm going to the bar jeans and a nice top if we're going for jeans and a nice top i would wear some really like long straight leg jeans that like fit really nicely and then i would wear this top by mega fox with boohoo because it's just really slinky it's really sexy it's <laughs> took me a little while to get on properly because i was like where does my arm go but it looks really really cool once it's on and obviously if you're going out it's now winter you're going to be cold so you need to put something else on like a blazer or a coat so i really love this coat it's so nice the color is like this really really subtle ever so slightly pinkish kind of nude and it is so 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 pretty it goes really nicely with one of my chanel bags in a very very similar color so stunning absolutely love it so it's really nice and also i sized up twice to get this fit so you know it's just I, you know what i'm like with oversized things like i like things to be oversized i like to be able to i think it looks more expensive i think it looks more high-end i think it looks very like kind of old money in paris vibes when you get a coat like this especially like a belted one and you size up i love it what do you use on your hair to get these waves so i use like quite a few different things so these are using my dyson air app i have got a tutorial of it but i might do an updated one so i use the thinner barrel and i put loads i did it last night 
put on loads of hairspray and then I just went to bed and I woke up like this. How do you make money as an influencer? So I make money as an influencer with brand deals. So obviously when you go on Instagram and you see things like obviously say ads in my stories or on my feed or anything like that, anything that says ads and has a brand tag or the paid partnership thing tag, that is how I make money. It's essentially, you know, I only work with brands that I like and brands that I shop from, brands that I would wear myself and would spend my own money on. They call it a collaboration because you are collaborating and you basically create like, it's like an advertorial. It's advertising, but you're advertising something that you like. Well, you should be advertising something you like if you're a legit, proper, good influencer. Um, so yeah, that's how it works. And also affiliate. So a lot of the links below in my description box for YouTube videos, a lot of them are affiliate links, which means if you go and buy something, from those links, I make a small commission and like that commission can be anything from like 5% to 20% but like it's more like 5% or sometimes even less. So it's very, very small. Do you have a manager? Yes, I do have a manager. I have been with my, my agent for like a couple years now. She's amazing. I'm like, she's amazing. She's really similar to me. Um, no, we are, we're both Virgos. So we have a very similar energy to things. Um, my parents really love her. They think that she's great. My mum always asks about her. All my friends have girl crushes on her because she's also really hot. Okay, this one, I have had this question so much. Um, are you and Jimmy still together? I honestly, every time I do a Q and A on Instagram, I get this question the most every time I like even I don't do even no matter what I do like I will get people in my DMs messaging me and saying are you and Jimmy still together it's really difficult because obviously you know for the people who are the OGs here you will know that I met Jimmy out in LA when I was out there and it, he was kind of he wasn't in the vlog but I talked about him in the vlog things have been really difficult recently okay to kind of summarize where we're at now we were doing long distance between Australia and the UK and it was absolutely fine it worked really well for us realistically with, with the way that our jobs are it really facilitated for that it was amazing and then the pandemic hit so it just made things so difficult for us and then he came over in November last year and stayed for five months. It came to April and he was like, I've got to go back home. Um, he had like some illness in the family, which is really sad. So he's from New Zealand originally. So he had to fly back to New Zealand. So he went back to work. He's been working, saving up money, applied for his visa to come and move back to the UK. And then two weeks before he was meant to be moving here, he gets told that his spinal surgery that he had six years ago has failed again and that he is going to most likely need surgery and that he shouldn't move over here because he needs to sort out his back but they didn't give any dates he basically got put on a wait list for five months for an appointment about his back it's really shit and it's been really really hard i can't go over to new zealand he can't really come over here at the minute um it's just like it, it's it's really hard. Long distance relationships are really difficult, especially if they're like binational, um, especially in a pandemic. And especially if this person has to have back surgery and it's really impossible. It is even harder to get in and out of um, New Zealand than it is Australia, I think. So it's just, it's just really difficult. And I just, I just don't know. So we're still together. We are still together, but it has been, very hard. How did you decide what breed of dog to get? So I've had some really traumatic experiences with dogs growing up. So I haven't, I didn't really like dogs, I'll be honest. I didn't like dogs, I was really scared of them. My friend, um, when I was like four years old, she had like half of her face pretty much bitten off by a Alsatian, I think. Maybe an Alsatian and like she had a really big scar from all the way here to all the way there It was like awful like that was she was only she was so young So like from that age we had like the fear instilled of us of like you need to be scared of dogs because dogs can do that to you And then when I was like 12 years old or 11 or 12 I went my friend's mum was like can you girls take the dogs for a walk because they had two Labradors lovely dogs but they what they saw a cat and like they just like they were just too strong for us pulled out of our arms because they were just desperate to get this cat and then they killed the cat they i don't know what happened but like watching the the black lab like there was a black and a golden lab and watching it like sink its teeth into the cat and shake it around like that and the noises at the same time i had a rape alarm on and the rape alarm like flung off and went underneath the car and I was like trying to scramble to get the rape alarm. Like, and I don't know, like after that, like the cat, like we, we didn't see what happened to the cat, but the dogs were covered in blood. And then 
after like we were just what we like me and my friend were trying to like rush back to the house and then we the cat like the body it happened sort of up an alleyway like going through some houses and we just heard this like really loud scream from a woman come from up there so like i didn't see what state the cat was like left in and i had cats like i have i've always had cats so like it really like that really cut me deep and then I had an ex-boyfriend who had a dog who was really unpredictable. And you know, like me and this dog have come a long way. I'm friends with this ex-boyfriend and I really get on with this dog now, but he is very unpredictable. But at the time he hated me and I was still very scared of dogs. So he would always like, you know, I'd be like lying on the sofa and if you move too quickly, the dog would just go Rah! at you. And it was just uh, like, yeah. So I've never liked dogs. I've never liked dogs because of bad experiences. And then one day I met a Pomeranian. It was so cute. He was, I was just so in love. He was so sweet, such an amazing nature. And after that, I was like, I am obsessed with Pomeranians. They are so sweet. They have such a good nature. They are just like, I felt like, I felt like it was kind of like a cat, but a dog. And that's what made it feel like, it made it made me like dogs again. And it made me feel comfortable around dogs. So that's how I decided what breed I wanted to get. It was like the only breed of dog that I really felt truly comfortable around from having a good, really good experience with it and like holding it. And yeah, I just, I just really, <laughs> I just really felt the connection with that dog. And yeah, so that was it. Where would you recommend for a fun night out in Clapham? Oh my God. <laughs> I don't go out anymore, so I don't know. I hear Archer Street in Clapham Junction is really good, and I keep meaning to try that out, but everyone I know who's been there says it's really good. What did you want to be when you were a kid? I wanted to be a fashion designer. I wanted to be a fashion designer or a fashion writer or a model. I always wanted to be something in fashion. So like, I actually, I love the fact that I'm, if, if I knew what this job was back then, I would have wanted to have been this because this basically kind of like encapsulates so much of what I wanted to be when I was a kid into like this one job description and I absolutely love it. I wanted to, well actually I wanted to be either an actress, TV presenter, model, <laughs> um, fashion designer, fashion writer, so those kind of things and I kind of feel like this job borrows little tiny snippets of every single one. So I'm honestly, I feel, I, on, it sounds so silly, but I genuinely feel like I was sort of destined to go this route. Like this feels like my perfect job and I'm so grateful for it. If you could live anywhere else, where would it be? It would be Bali, it is my happy place. I love it so much. I will, I want to move there, but you cannot take dogs from overseas. Like there's a law against it. So if that law changes, I am honestly, I am packing up. I'm taking my dog and we are moving to Bali. How did you decide what procedures to get done? And do you discuss it with Jimmy first? Oh, uh, okay. So no, I don't. I don't discuss it, especially I don't discuss things that I have had done since before I met him. When it came to my nose job, obviously that was quite a big deal. And it was really, that was the hardest thing because I don't want to cause issues in the relationship. And I know like, you know, you want your partner to support what you want to do. But also you don't want them to be like, yeah, babe, get the nose drop, you'll look so great. Cause you're like, oh. Um, so you kind of do want them to put up a little bit of a fight, but also be accepting, which is, you know, he wasn't happy when I first chose to have the nose drop. But I just said to him, I was like, look, I, I was really nervous about telling him. I was like, I'm gonna have a consultation about a nose drop. And he was like, why? And I was like, I just don't wanna keep putting filler in my nose. Like I wanna get as much filler out of my face as possible. Realistically, I only wanna have filler in my under eyes and like lips, like where I feel like I, I really feel like I need it. Everywhere else, I just wanna get it gone. So yeah, it was, it was a bit difficult. But then after, like, you know, he was really supportive and he trusted me and I was like, look, I don't wanna come out. He was like, oh, I don't want you to have a like really ridiculous, tiny fake nose. And I was like, I don't want that either. And he really trusted me in the fact that I did not want something really crazy and fake and different to like what I had, what I had originally. So that's good. And then once I had the cast off, he was like, looking at me, I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, you look really good with that nose. It looks so much better. I was like, oh, all right, thanks. What advice would you give someone moving to London? Have money and savings. Have a little bit of money and savings because it is expensive here. If you're moving here to start a job on a basic salary, I think it really helps. Um, another thing, get used to walking. You're gonna be walking a lot. I was really shocked at how much I walked when I moved here because before I was living in Cardiff and I had a car and I drove, I would drive to the Sainsbury's that was like a two minute walk down the road. 
it was just normal it was like you know why would i walk when i can drive so yeah also it's great london's amazing which platform was your fave to make content on i would say instagram or actually tiktok i only have like 800 followers on tiktok but i think that's probably why i enjoy it because like i can be really silly on that and like i don't feel like i have to take anything too seriously and i can just enjoy it and have a laugh and there's like a lot less pressure on there for me anyway if i had more followers i'd probably be like Ugh, pressure but because i don't it's actually just really fun do you have a girl group how do you make friends as an adult i don't really have a girl group anymore like i so for my birthday my 30th my friend organized it for me and like my friends that showed up like the friends and the friends that came were all like member i'm kind of like i have like lots of individual friends who also they belong to their own groups but then i have a lot of like close individual friendships so my main like girl group would would have been my uni friends but i don't see them very much anymore but i would still say that's probably like my main group of the girls and then also my home friends but you know they're not just the girls because we've got we've got like harry in there my gay best friend so it's like the girls and the guy so that's they're probably like my main groups but like i've got closer friendships like singular friendships so it was actually really nice at my birthday because it was like so many people who like knew about each other through me and they followed each other on instagram because like you know i you know i obviously talk to them be like oh yeah my friend so and so and they all followed each other and they're like it's so nice to actually meet you properly so maybe i just need to bring them all together to make this like really awesome girl group but yeah um i think it's it's hard making friends as an adult and i definitely feel like hitting 30 i have realized that it's it's hard like i have a, a lot of friends but like because i have those friendships in individual places it's a lot harder to keep tabs on things it's a lot harder to it's more difficult you're not, not necessarily having a big night out with like a big group of girls i say doing sociable things get a dog oh my god i have made so many more friends since having a dog like i have made so many more friends since having a dog so if you can get a dog get a dog you will meet people out and about you'll get talking to people people will be like oh should we go for a dog walk next week like you know our dogs get on really well let's go out for like a little dog walk and a coffee and it's so nice i love that um it was a real big community vibe about that so i think anything where there is a little bit of a community so join a fitness group but like one that's a bit more interactive and like i feel like f45 would maybe be a good one um i think just joining some form of group that always helps because you've got common interests to like link you together anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video and thank you so much for listening to me waffle on for ages with all these answers um yeah it's been really fun catching up with you guys and thanks for all the questions and i'll be back soon with another video as always links to anything i've mentioned are below and my instagram my tiktok and all that stuff and my shop and my secondhand shop and yeah and also make sure you subscribe and i'll see you guys very soon bye